Breathing and Exchange of Gases, NCRT, Single Sentence Based Questions. Did already up to 207. Let's do from 201 now. Location in the human body where oxygen binds with hemoglobin, he said at lungs. Location of the human body where oxyhemoglobin dissociates as oxygen and hemoglobin, that is at tissues, as we are seeing earlier. If partial pressure of oxygen is high, it facilitates association of oxyhemoglobin. Oxygen is low, that makes dissociation. Factors other than PO2 influencing the association or dissociation of oxyhemoglobin, carbon dioxide, H plus ion concentration, we call pH, temperature. Curve which explains the relationship between Percentage saturation of hemoglobin and partial pressure of oxygen is oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. Shape of the curve is a sigmoid curve. Now let's start from 208. The curve which is highly useful in studying the effect of factors such as PCO2, H plus ion concentration, temperature, oxygen, hemoglobin dissociation curve. Oxygen, hemoglobin, dissociation, curve. Condition favorable for the dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin. Low carbon dioxide and uh, high uh, high partial pressure of carbon dioxide, low partial pressure of oxygen and uh, Low pH, temperature should be higher, higher temperature. Condition favorable for the formation of oxyhemoglobin. Oxygen should be higher, oxygen should be higher and uh, low carbon dioxide, partial pressure of carbon dioxide should be low and uh, pH should be high, that means base, then temperature should be low lower temperature. If H plus ion concentration is decreasing the blood, the pH of blood will be increases. Sorry. Decreases. Hydrogen ion concentration is decreasing in the blood, pH of blood will be decreased. That means it becomes acidic. Hydrogen ion concentration in the blood, if the blood pH is lower than 7.4, that means high base. Hydrogen ion concentration in the blood, if the blood pH is higher than normal, low. In the graph, we show oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve X x axis represent x axis represent partial pressure of oxygen partial pressure of oxygen in the graph which show oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve y axis represent saturation of oxyhemoglobin saturation of oxyhemoglobin sigmoid curve shows nearly 85% of oxyhemoglobin formation is possible even at low oxygen pressures like 40 mm of Hg. The factor facilitated for this action. Low carbon dioxide and uh, high pH, lower temperature are helpful for the association, more association of oxygen with the hemoglobin. Sigmoid curve shows even PO2 reaches to 60 mm of Hg, but oxyhemoglobin saturation is still 85% nearly. Factors influencer for these. High carbon dioxide, high carbon dioxide, low pH and uh, higher temperature doesn't allow binding of oxygen with uh, hemoglobin. In oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, if the Curve is shifting toward the right. Identify the conditions of given factors. Increase or decrease. Condition of pH. 
decreases that means it become acidic condition of h plus ions increases h plus ion concentration increases condition of carbon dioxide increases condition of temperature increases in oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve if the curve is going away from the y axis identify the condition of given factors as increase or decrease condition of given factors as increase or decrease first condition of ph condition of uh, ph decreases condition of h plus ion increases condition of carbon dioxide increases condition of temperature increases temperature increases in oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve the curve is moving towards the y axis curve is moving towards the y axis identify the conditions of given factor as increase and uh, decrease first condition of ph increases condition of h plus ions condition of h plus ion decreases and uh, condition of temperature temperature decreases in the alveoli the factors are all favorable for the formation of oxyhemoglobin mention the favorable factors here in the alveoli the favorable factors high po2 that means uh, it is about nearly 104 mm of hg can be expected then high carbon dioxide partial pressure of carbon dioxide is low actually low carbon dioxide low partial pressure of carbon dioxide and uh, lesser h plus ion concentration you can expect here ionic concentration lesser ionic con h plus ion concentration that means uh, we can say it as a uh, high ph okay high ph temperature should be low these are all the conditions favorable for the formation of oxyhemoglobin at alveoli whereas uh, in the tissue the factors uh, are favorable for dissociation of oxygen from hemoglobin mention the favorable factors here tissues in case of tissues dissociation is required so that means partial pressure of oxygen should be low for tissues to get oxygen or for breaking of oxyhemoglobin and high pco2 and uh, higher h plus ion concentration that means uh, ph should be low and temperature should be higher higher temperature can be expected over next effect of pco2 and h plus ion concentration on the oxygen affinity of hemoglobin is called bore effect increase of carbon dioxide in the blood and decrease in ph results in the reduction of the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen this effect is called bore effect rise in pco2 and fall in ph decreases the affinity for of hemoglobin for oxygen condition of pco2 and ph in tissues and it facilitates condition of wait, wait we have a question above that condition of pco2 in p and ph in alveoli it uh, facilitate in alveoli condition of carbon dioxide is low low carbon dioxide ph high high ph can be expected here and it facilitates binding of oxygen with hemoglobin binding of oxygen with hemoglobin condition of pco2 and p of and ph in tissues and it facilitate carbon dioxide should be high high partial pressure of carbon dioxide can be expected here ph should be low low ph that means uh, more h plus ion concentration and it facilitate 
breaking of oxygen and hemoglobin and that will be supplied to the tissues then uh, at uh, po2 of 100 mm of hg which is typical at lungs percent age of saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen that is about 97% at po2 of 40 mm of hg at po2 of 40 mm of hg which is common in tissues during rest state percentage of saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen that will be reduced and nearly 22% we supplied to the tissues at uh, po2 of 20 mm of hg which is possible at skeletal muscle which are involved in the vigorous exercise percentage of saturation of hemoglobin with uh, oxygen that almost 62% we get supplied to the tissues because they have very low so that's why they have only 35% left over unloading of oxygen from oxy hemoglobin of systemic capillaries to tissues depends upon requirement and uh, utilization of oxygen by tissues if they utilize more they get more if they utilize less they get less percentage of oxygen given to the tissues at rest by systemic capillaries at rest they get only less that means 22% they get and percentage of oxygen given to the skeletal muscles at uh, vigorous exercise that means they used more that's why they get more that is about uh, 62% then next percentage of oxygen remain in the systemic capillaries after crossing the tissues at uh, rest tissues at rest they get supplied only 22% that's why they are able to carry 75% as a reserve oxygen percentage of oxygen in systemic capillaries after crossing skeletal muscles or at vigorous exercise they already supplied a lot that's why after leaving the tissues they have only 35% as a reserve oxygen in a resting person amount of hemoglobin always carried by blood which is still available tissues for the asking resting person they supply only 22% in general that's why definitely nearly 75% can be 70 75% can be expected over ncrt answer nearly 70% near by can see then oxy hemoglobin ensures supply of oxygen for survival for 4 to 5 minutes after stopping of heart or when breathing is interrupted how how in a resting person in a resting person in a resting person hemoglobin always carries about 70% oxygen always carry about 70% oxygen which is available for the tissues per asking unloading tension in the oxy hemoglobin of systemic capillaries depends upon pressure and a requirement of oxygen in tissues if tissues use more oxygen condition facilitate in the tissues to take more oxygen from systemic capillaries they should have less oxygen and they use more after oxygen that's why they have less and that makes facilitation of more carbon dioxide in the tissues and temperature will be high because of breakdown of the glucose heat energy is liberated that all facilitates more oxygen they get reason for more carbon dioxide tissues to use more oxygen that's what we said breakdown of oxygen liberates uh, more carbon dioxide more oxygen breakdown means more carbon dioxide releases reason for more h plus ion in the systemic capillaries when they are passing to the tissues who use more oxygen reason released carbon dioxide released carbon dioxide dissolves in the plasma dissolved in the plasma to form carbonic acid dissolved in the plasma to form carbonic acid and it uh, follows the formation of h plus ions and it follows the formation of h plus ions 
reason for the high temperature tissues who use more oxygen breakdown of glucose by oxygen releases heat energy breakdown of oxygen of glucose uh, by oxygen releases heat energy that makes more temperature in the tissues where you are utilizing more oxygen right the path of oxygen from pulmonary capillaries to tissues path of oxygen first it will come through pulmonary vein then from the pulmonary vein we'll go to the left atria left atria to left ventricle and left ventricle to left systemic aorta then it will be supplied to all the body parts tissues and cells chambers of heart with bright red blood that means bright red makes oxyhemoglobin so that's why we can say on the left side of the heart oxygenated blood is going that means answer is left atria and left ventricle major veins with bright red blood that means uh, the lungs uh, oxygenated blood from the lungs is carried by pulmonary vein that's why the pulmonary veins are having bright red major arteries with bright red blood that we are talking about left systemic aorta which is supplying uh, blood to the body parts left systemic aorta left ventricle from the left ventricle the left systemic aorta get carried over that all we can say all arteries we can answer like this all arteries except pulmonary aorta because pulmonary aorta is carrying uh, deoxygenated blood arteries with purplish bluish red colored hemoglobin containing blood that means that is a pulmonary artery veins with purplish bluish red colored hemoglobin contain blood all veins all veins that means superior and inferior vena cava their respective branches all veins except pulmonary vein because pulmonary vein is carrying oxygenated blood only about 1/5 of the oxygen blood is unloaded in the resting tissues remaining 4/5 is in the form of reserve in the blood itself why tissues at uh, rest require less oxygen tissues at uh, rest require less oxygen supply of oxygen to tissue supply of oxygen to tissues depends on requirement of oxygen not uh, the general dumping here supply of oxygen is based upon the requirement of the oxygen tissues such as skeletal muscles are involved in vigorous exercise there is more unloading tension in the oxyhemoglobin and so more oxygen is given away rapidly up to 62% and the systemic capillaries have only 35% while leaving why why because unloading of oxygen that's what we said now unloading of oxygen depends upon unloading of oxygen to the tissues depends on requirement depends on requirement if tissues utilize more if tissues utilize more oxygen and uh, they have less if they have less oxygen that means low oxygen partial pressure that is as uh, much as 20 mm of hg when they reaches then uh, they get more from blood capillaries then they get more from blood capillaries systemic capillaries we are talking about number of oxygen molecules carried by each hemoglobin molecule at 97% of oxyhemoglobin four if oxyhemoglobin saturation is uh, 50% each hemoglobin carry two oxygen molecule number of oxygen molecule carried by each hemoglobin which uh, saturation level at 25% of oxyhemoglobin that means one that means in any condition hemoglobin is with oxygen either 25 50 97 if 100 ml of blood contain 5 ml of oxygen percent saturation of oxygen with hemoglobin is it is generally 97% we can say here 
of uh, oxyhemoglobin we can say we can't make it 100 oxyhemoglobin we can say at this pressure po2 100 ml of lead contain 5 ml of oxygen at uh, pressure we are asking that means 95 mm of hg 97% of oxyhemoglobin is carried out that makes 5 ml of oxygen hemoglobin reacts chemically as either an acid or base hence it is called hence it is called amphoteric compound amphoteric compound hemoglobin has a peculiar character of taking more oxygen in oxygen rich areas and leave carbon dioxide and accepting more carbon dioxide in areas where the carbon dioxide is more and leave oxygen hence it is called amphoteric compound and hemoglobin is uh, called as amphoteric compound number of ways carbon dioxide is transported in human in general three ways percentage of carbon dioxide which is transported in dissolved state in the water of plasma physical solution it is very less nearly 7% only why is the ph of deoxygenated venous blood less than that of oxygenated by the dissolution of carbon dioxide by the dissolution of carbon dioxide in the blood plasma nearly 7% is going to be dissolved over dissolved plasma ph is altered in uh, venous blood percentage of carbon dioxide which is transported in the form of carbamino compounds 22 to 25% per percentage of carbon dioxide transported as bicarbonates it is nearly 70% carbon dioxide binds with this group of hemoglobin to form carbamino compound free amino group carbon dioxide dissolves in the water and uh, form here we have a which which enzyme is facilitating further and b what compound is going to be formed that uh, a shows reversible reaction the reaction is reversible and uh, dissolved a state in the plasma here it is transport is called uh, C, wait a minute. Carbon dioxide dissolves in the water. Action reaction shows B. Carbonic acid is going to be formed over here. Type of carbon dioxide transport is called. If it is water in the plasma, we can say as uh, yeah. Here it is. Carbon dioxide dissolves in the water of plasma. that uh, curve shows a this is a reversible reaction and this type of carbon dioxide b carbonic acid and this type of carbon dioxide uh, reaction what do you call it's a physical solution as a physical solution nearly 7% is going to be transported like this then next hb a that means which group it is going to participate nh2 amino group bind with carbon dioxide and form hb b at b here it is we have to answer what is this uh, that is nh co o carbamino we can call what is n b with reference to carbon dioxide transport we call carbamino compound that means carbon dioxide binds with uh, amino group of hemoglobin protein and that form carb amino hemoglobin carb amino compound next when pco2 is high and po2 is low hb binds with and form hb binds with carbon dioxide pco2 is high means that binds with carbon dioxide and uh, that will happen at uh, tissues generally and that form carbamino hemoglobin carbamino hemoglobin when 
PCO2 is low and PO2 is high. Reactions with reference to hemoglobin. Dissociation. Dissociation of carbamino. Carbamino hemoglobin as carbon dioxide and uh, hydrogen, uh, hemoglobin. Dissociation at uh, alveoli. High PCO2, low PO2 can be expected in human body at high carbon dioxide means that is at tissues. High PO2, low PCO2 can be expected in human body at alveoli. Dissociation of uh, carbamino hemoglobin as carbon dioxide and hemoglobin takes place at lung, uh, at lungs, al at alveoli, we can say. Association of carbon dioxide and hemoglobin as carbamino hemoglobin takes place at tissues where high carbon dioxide present. Compound formed by the union of carbon dioxide with uh, plasma proteins, carbamino hemoglobin. RBC contain very high concentration of these enzymes and a minute quantity of the same enzyme is present in the plasma too. This enzyme is carbonic anhydrase. This enzyme facilitates the following reaction in both directions. Carbonic anhydrase, the enzyme which facilitates Dissolvation of carbon dioxide in the water to form carbonic acid in the RBC. It is more in RBC. At the tissues where partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high due to, due to the catabolism, breakdown of uh, glucose. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the blood of RBC plasma and form carbonic acid here. tissues. Carbonic acid dissociated as carbon dioxide water and carbon dioxide is eliminated here where PCO2 is low. It is at alveoli. Most of carbon dioxide is trapped like this at tissues and transported to the alveoli where it is released out as carbon dioxide. That is at uh, alveoli. So most of the carbon dioxide trapped like this means in what format we are talking. We have 70 percent, 7 percent and uh, uh, that little amount 20 to 22 percent. So 70 percent carbon dioxide transported in the form of as we call as bicarbonates so that we have to answer here. It uh, Carbon dioxide dissolves in the water of RBC and form this compound. Carbonic acid, carbonic acid. H plus HCO3 minus ions are formed in the RBC due to the dissociation of these compounds. Carbonic acid. Ions which diffuse into the plasma from RBC at uh, tissues. Bicarbonate ions. Ions which diffuse into the plasma. Bicarbonate ions. H plus ion cannot diffuse into the plasma from RBC at uh, tissues. Why? The RBC membrane, RBC membrane, which is called Donans membrane, is permeable, is permeable for anions and uh, H plus is cation that can't go out. Permeable for anions only. There is no permission to the cation. And H plus is the cation. Can't go out. H plus ions in RBC. That means a tissues buffered to curtail acidity by this. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin acts as buffer. <coughs> H plus. HCO3 minus plus HB4O2, A, B, C, what it results. That uh, hydrogen bind with hemoglobin, then uh, hydrogen bind with hemoglobin,
then uh, hydrogen is with hemoglobin oxygen will be liberated into the tissues here it is happening at tissues so then the c what will be the c the three reactions hco3 minus bicarbonate ions will be released out into the plasma bicarbonate ions will be released into plasma increase in h plus ion concentration in rbc can break this bond at tissues ion hydrogen ion concentration can break bond between oxy hemoglobin due to high pressure of oxygen h hb is dissociated as h plus and hb and form hbo2 at this reaction occurs at uh, alveoli where uh, high pspo2 present here high oxygen partial pressure present there that's why it happens there to maintain electrical balance these ions diffuse from plasma into rbc when the bicarbonate ion pass out of the rbc into the plasma that uh, chloride ions chloride ions do this uh, they move from plasma to rbc to maintain the balance where bicarbonate ions outside into the plasma from rbc exchange of chloride and bicarbonate ion between rbc and plasma at tissues is called chloride shift movement of chloride ions back into the plasma from rbc is called it is called reverse chloride shift locate these components with respect to carbon dioxide and uh, transport at tissues as bicarbonate answer the location as rbc plasma a h plus ions h plus ions where do you see h plus ion h plus ions are present in rbc they can't move out isn't it they can't move out h plus ion will be in rbc only and uh, they bind with uh, hemoglobin hhb bicarbonate ion they are in plasma chloride ions they shifted to the rbc isn't it they shifted to the rbc they are in rbc hhb HHB, this all happen in uh, case of RBC, in case, in the inside the RBC, we can see. Hem hemoglobin can act as a buffer at physiological pH 7.4. How? Because it contain high content of histidine. Manaya and amino acid called histidine makes them to do like so. Chloride shift is also called Hamburger's phenomenon. Reverse chloride shift occurs here. Reverse chloride shift occurs at lung alveoli. Separate these components of deoxygenated blood and locate their presence either in RBC or plasma. Okay, so now let's start. Let's start. A. H plus ions. H plus ions are going to be in H plus ions. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. H plus ions are going to be in plasma. Then uh, HHB. Uh, wait, wait a minute. H plus ions are going to be in RBC only. HHB, that is in RBC only. That all happen at tissues. And uh, HB, NH, COO. That means carbamino, hemoglobin. Carbamino, hemoglobin. This is also going to be in RBC because uh, uh, hemoglobin is only in RBC. H2CO3, 7%. That is in uh, plasma. Then bicarbonate ions. HCO3 minus ions. At tissues, they migrate into the plasma, isn't it? Then uh, chloride ions. At tissues, they migrates into the RBC, we call it as chloride shift. Location of respiratory rhythm center. Respiratory rhythm center is located at medulla oblongata, the part of the hind brain of the, in the hind brain, in the brain. Next, neural signal from this center can reduce the duration of inspiration, thereby alter the respiration. Pneumotoxic center center we call pneumotoxic center the area which is situated 
adjacent to the respiratory rhythm center which is highly sensitive to carbon dioxide and H plus ions. That is hemosensitive area. Receptors associated with these can recognize the changes in carbon dioxide and H plus ion concentration and send necessary signal to the respiratory rhythm center and pneumotaxic center for necessary action. Here it is, uh, aortic arch and uh, aortic arch and carotid artery. Necessary action required when the concentration of carbon dioxide and uh, H plus ion increase in the blood plasma. Increase in the rate and depth of breathing. Center in the pons of the brain stem is called pneumotaxic center. Center present in the medulla region of brain is called medulla region, respiratory rhythm center. Area which can send signals to the respiratory rhythm center to make the necessary adjustment in the respiratory process by which carbon dioxide and H plus ions can be eliminated. Chemosensitive area. Neural signal from this center can reduce the duration of inspiration and these by alter the respiration. Pneumotaxic center. Center which is primarily responsible for the regulation of respiratory rhythm. Respiratory rhythm center. Area and center which can send signals to the respiratory rhythm center. Pneumotaxic center and chemosensitive area. Pneumotaxic center and chemosensitive area. Receptors which can send signals to the respiratory rhythm center. Receptors above the carotid arch and uh, carotid arch and systemic arch. A person is taking long breath means these substances are increased in blood. That means carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions are get increased that we can understand. The rule of oxygen in the regulation of the respiratory rhythm center is quite insignificant. We recognize only by increase of carbon dioxide and H plus ion concentration. The dash is difficult in breathing, causing wheezing due to inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles, that is asthma. Dash is a chronic disorder in which alveolar walls are damaged due to which respiratory surface is decreased. Emphysema. Proliferation of fibrous tissue in lungs can be called as fibrosis. Workers of grinding or stone breaking industries should wear protective masks to prevent Occupational respiratory disorder. One of the major causes for this disease in cigarette smoking. Emphysema. In certain industries, especially those involving grinding or stone breaking, so much dust is produced that the defense mechanism of the body cannot fully cope with the situation. Long exposure can give rise to the inflammation leading to fibrosis. Leading to fibrosis. And serious lung damage we can expect here. Damage of the lung, serious lung damage. Any lung condition you get at work, such respiratory disorder can be considered as occupational respiratory disorder. Occupational respiratory disorder. So these are the 316 questions of breathing and exchange of gases. Then read the text and try to practice the answers here. Try to practice the uh, answers. Try to answer the particular questions given here.
every sentence of the NCRT is completely covered. So practice the questions from here will definitely helpful to get uh, the full marks 360 by 360 in neat examination. Thank you.